Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and Dale Green, aka That Dale Dude, has just released a skill learn system plugin for RPG developer Bakking. I'll put a link to this in the description below, but it is a paid plugin, which is currently $4.99 USD. And reading the description of the plugin itself, with the skill learn system, you'll be able to set up requirements, skills, and then purchase them once the requirements have been met. What could this mean? Well, Dale already has an awesome tutorial video embedded in the itch.io page as a link to his YouTube. So definitely check that out or come along with me and we will install and use this plugin ourselves. So thank you so much to Dale for letting me check this plugin out on my channel and let's begin. So how to install, download and extract the zip file for the skill learn system. It is now downloaded and extracted. This is going to play out a lot like my previous plugin installation videos, although there might be a couple of details changed due to some enhanced plugin functionality that is now available in RPG developer Bakking. Hallelujah. When you unzip this file, you're going to see the four files inside. There's the readme, which has your attributions, a link to Dale's other work and the terms of use. You're going to have the layout for the layouts. You're going to have the plugin itself, which is a .dll file, and you're going to have the script file. The DLL file is going to go into our backing folder forever. That's where it will sit. We'll never have to repeat that step ever again, no matter how many projects we create. And the script file is going to go into our project folder so that every time we create a new project, if we want to use the system, we're going to have to include this script file. And then the layouts, of course, will also go into our project. First things first, let's grab this plugin.dll and you may cut or copy. I prefer to cut. We're going right into our Bakking folder. We're going to go into the plugins folder and then we're going to paste it. Don't worry if your contents of your folder don't look like this. I have a bunch of plugins already. Uh, each of these was previously covered in another plugin video for Bakking. So if you want to know more about plugins and what kind of plugins are available at this point, go check that out. And just as a reminder, this particular folder on your system should be in C, Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Bakking plugins. It'll be somewhere else if you installed RPG Developer Bakking elsewhere on your PC. The next thing to do is to grab our skill learn system script. We're going to cut that. Now I'm going to open RPG Developer Bakking because I'm going to go to my project and rather than crawl all through my PC to find where my project folder is at, I really like just opening it up in the editor and in the upper right corner of the screen where you've got your path, you can right click on that and then just click view the path location in Explorer and it'll open the folder right up for you. So this is our project folder. If you don't have a script folder, you can make one. You can right click, click new, click folder, and then just name the new folder script. And that is that. Don't make the mistake I've done and write scripts with an S because Bakking won't recognize that. It'll still make its own script folder and it will only look in the script folder. So we're going to paste that file in here. Again, this is the skill learn system script.cs file. And the next thing to do is to create a common event so that we can actually use this plugin. Uh, we're looking currently at my RPG in my pocket project. So all of this is my own doing. This is actually the game that I worked on and submitted to the RPG developer Bucking Summer 2020 Game Jam. It doesn't have skills, but we're going to put skills in it. So while I'm in the map editor over here on the left side, we've got the common events section. Yours might be placed elsewhere if you've got it tabbed or moved somewhere else and pinned. Mine is here. I'm going to click the add button. When the common event selector comes up, the countdown timer seems to be selected by default. I wish it was custom event, but I'm going to click custom event and then click OK, because that's what we want. The event editor is now here. And in the lower left corner, we have the C sharp program assignment. You're just going to click that. And then all of the plugins that are in that script folder will show here, regardless of whether you are using them or not. It's just kind of browsing that location and looking. Here's what we need, the script skill learn system script.cs. So just click that and then click OK. And now this plugin is assigned to this common event. The next thing we have to do is go here to the right side of the event editor where we have our panels and you can edit in text or you can use panels. I prefer panels. So that's what I'm doing here. Clicking the plus button and we are going to add a switch by clicking the switches tab and then event switch on or off command. Now, plugins like this are always looking for specific switches or variables to watch in order to function before they can start coming in with their code and all of their functionality. And this one has a very specific switch that we're going to create so that it knows to look for that switch and the status of it. And that switch is show skill learn. You're basically just going to keep it in the value tab, which is where it goes by default and add a switch. And you're just going to name it show skill learn. Just like that with the capital S, S and L. And then by default, that is set to turn on. So we're just going to hit apply and OK. 
If you've seen these videos before, you probably know the next step is we're gonna go to the layout tool on the left side of the screen. And by the way, don't forget to name your common event. You can name it whatever you like. I'm gonna rename mine to uh, skill learn system. That's important because we're gonna be referring to that from another menu here right now. With our layout tool open, we are going to go immediately and without clicking anything to this button right here. It's a little folder with an arrow going into it. This is the import layouts button. Click that and then we are going to browse to the location where our plugin folder is. And we're going to click that file, the skill learn layouts layout that is included with this plugin. It's the last thing that was in here. Just click open. And now if we go to the menu section in the left hand side, you'll notice up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen, we have the main menu skill learn layout. Just tick that box right next to that. That's going to use that instead of the default main menu. So if you select between them, you'll see that there are notable differences between the layouts themselves. The default main menu has got these two columns, five rows, money and playtime, a total of 10 options. And if you click the main menu skill learn you have a total of 11 options with your menu items now spanning three columns and there's the extra option right there learn skills now you can customize this aspect of it i'm just going to go in with the default in order to be able to demonstrate what this thing does and learn it but you can place this somewhere else this could go in an npc this could be used in any context imaginable any way that you can think of from any game that you've ever played where you learn skills you can implement that functionality in docking Okay, so after you're done checking out the differences, make sure that it's main menu underscore skill learn that you have selected. And then we're gonna go to the layout parts down below. We're gonna double click on this main menu window selection. And we'll be presented with a list of all of the containers representing the different menu items in the actual menu. I want you to click on learn skills. And then on the right, we'll be able to change the properties of the learn skills menu item. Uh, but we, the only thing that we're going to do is we are going to change the common events selection to skill learn system. And that is picking up the name that we put in for our common event. So that's why it was important to make sure you name that. Once upon a time, I left the name of my common event and by default, it was just event. So when I was over here for a plugin looking for what to select, it's like none or event. And I'm like, that makes no sense. But it actually made perfect sense. And I was just a doofus. And then I just hit apply and okay. Okay, the last step for our implementation here is we're going to go to functions at the top of the map editor, go down to expanded features, and you will now have access to the skill learn system plugin option. We're going to click that. And here's our lovely UI that shows us what all we can do. Now this won't show anything anywhere depending on what the template was when you made your game. My game doesn't have any skills in it to begin with. So actually there's nothing here and this plugin is useless until I make some skills. The plugin's not gonna do that for me. So let's make some skills. Database, skills, add. Everything is so empty here, wasteland. Okay, I've added some skills. They may or may not be exact clones of one another with just with different names, but we have Spark, Super Spark, Mega Spark, and Ultra Spark. Apply and okay. Back to my plugin, and you can see the skills right here. Oh, the selected skill doesn't have an ID set. Create one now? Yes. Actually, let's go ahead and click the generate skill IDs, and it'll go ahead and do that for all of them. Now you'll notice if you do that, all of your skills will now have ID tags in the management tags and notes section of your skills. This is largely how plugins are able to operate by having this sort of metadata here in the management tags and notes section. Bakking went a little more explicit with it than RPG Maker by having this say that these are management tags. So every single one of these has an ID applied to it now, thanks to our plugin. So let's actually get our skills into the skill learn system. You can see that I can select Spark from the drop down menu by skill. Its ID is one. We can add attributes. I can give it a cost. I can give it a level. I can require a skill. I can set a skill for the hero to forget once they have learned this one. And I can add a switch. Now, if, do you want to do multiples of these things? You absolutely can. We're just setting up one thing at a time. So you can have the cost be like five and then click the add button. That's going to generate a skill tag. This tag is going to be added to that skill. And this is what's going to be read whenever you are looking at the skill learn menu in your game during runtime. So right there, we have the learn cost skill tag at five gold. This is not anything that we have to edit or mess with. We've already put it in there. If you decide that you don't like that, you can remove it if you wish. If you have a bunch of them added, whoops, <laughs> then you can also decide to remove all of them. If you don't like them, you'll get a 
lovely reminder pop-up screen before you take that uh, no backseas action. For now, we're going to do a cost of zero and a level of one, and we'll just add that right in there. Learn require level one. We're, we're pretty much done. That's what it takes to learn Spark. To learn Super Spark, you need to have the Spark ability already learned, and this will require you as well to forget the skill Spark. So there, we have added both of those. The number in the parentheses is actually the ID of the spell. That's why it says learn require skill one. One is the ID of regular Spark. So of course, it's going to require you to have learned Spark first. And then after you learn this, we're going to forget that skill. We're going to forget Spark because we are evolving into someone who can use Mega Spark or Super Spark, I'm sorry. Don't forget to click the Save button before you move on to the next skill or else all of your hard work will be gone. <laughs> so save. The workload is go to the spell or skill and go ahead and add your attribute tags and then add that. Forget skill, super spark, add that. Save it, get your prompt and go to your next one. Ultra spark requires you to have learned mega spark and you will also forget mega spark and this time this time we're going to have learn require skill three we're going to remove that we're actually going to use the hide until learn version so add that and then here you can see the attribute that's added to the arguments is hide we've got to go for the uh, skills for classes tab so back here and then skills for classes. I don't have any classes, but we'll go to database and we'll go ahead and add a class. And we're gonna call this class uh, just, just normal. Now we've gotta to go to casts. Here's the hero cast. So we've gotta add the class to him. Then we can select the class in the plugin interface and we can add skills to the class. Add, learn skill one, super spark, four, mega spark, three, Ultra Spark, two to three. These are the skills that it can learn. Let's not forget to click save and then close that. All right, hero, that's us. Here we go, check it out. Here is our plugin UI. We can learn Spark, Super Spark, or Mega Spark, and I have Ultra Spark hidden. So with Spark must be level one. I just click the button and it's done. We've learned it. Uh, we didn't have any sort of fanfare or ability to like show on the screen that we learned the skill. We had no feedback. That could be a great uh, version two feature to have as well, or else we could get some instruction on how to get into this functionality and add our own confirmation messages and things like that. Uh, but with that out of the way, we can now learn Super Spark. And since I learned Spark, it is gone from the Learnable Skills menu. And I can leave this at any time. And if I had assigned a, a gold price to that, it would have been present right there in the Learn Skills menu as well. So there is that. Uh, Super Spark, we can go ahead and learn that. And now we can learn Mega Spark. And I did. And now we have the ability to learn Ultra Spark. And for some reason, Spark has come back. So interestingly enough, the uh, presence of the skill that I had to learn to forget a previous skill, it, it's gone now. So the previous skill is actually back because of that. That's very interesting. So you're going to have to make sure that if you do successive skills in a series like Fire, Fyra, Fyraga, that Fyraga not only makes you forget Fyra, but still fire so you would add both of those and make sure that the the plugin knows that you want to forget both of those because your player may not actually have access to that skill anymore but it'll be available in the menu where you can buy it however that menu is implemented because you're going to get access to this ui here so we can get ultra spark now and i can actually get spark as well because of this not bug exactly but sort of sort of feature maybe and then i can learn that all over again which means i now have i probably have all the skills i just have ultra spark and super spark interesting though interesting and that is the skill learn system from that dale dude dale thank you so much again for allowing me to check this out i'm looking forward to seeing what this system evolves into over time it'd be really awesome to see ui features 
And something I would really love to see is an attribute cost over here that allows us to check a variable. Something else is when we select switch, it would be great to have a drop down menu that allows us to select from the currently available switches that we have. Perhaps that's something we will see in a future update. Until then, guys, thanks so much for watching. Comment anything you like down below. Make sure you check out the link to this plugin in the description below, and I will see you in the next episode. Till then, have a great rest of your day, and bye for now.